Hi, this is Ahmed Alokaili, Jader Sandoval and Manos Brilakis, presenting case 256 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case in which a patient was referred for CTO-PCI based only on the findings of coronary CT and geography. This case was actually performed live as part of a city-guided PCI course at our institution a few months ago. This was a young gentleman who presented with angina, was found to have normal ejection fraction and was sent for a coronary CTA. This is the angiomib in which even if you are not an expert in coronary CT, you can appreciate that uh, the LAD has an occlusion at the proximal segment. So this is the LAD, this is a diagonal branch, and this is the proximal cap, this is the occlusion length. This view is very useful because we can see what angulation can be optimal for visualizing the occlusion. And also CT helps us visualize the distal vessel that has some diffuse disease as well. We don't see much calcium, which is a good prognostic factor for crossing the CTO. The length was about 26 millimeters, and actually CT is probably more accurate than coronary angiography for measuring the length of the occlusion. Same uh, factors, looking at a different software, the Clearly software, we have the Lady CTO, it is soft plaque, and the CTO is located just after the takeoff of this diagonal branch. The software automatically detects the CTO and provides the length. There is a score specific for CTA, that's called the CT Rector score. There are other ones, but that's the most commonly used. That is similar to the JCTO score. It looks at the presence of multiple occlusions in the vessel, blunt stump, presence of severe calcium, intralesion bending more than 45 degrees, previous failed attempt, and duration of CTO. And based on this, one can uh, have a score that correlates with the difficulty of crossing the CTO. In our case, the only adverse factor was the lack of a tapered stump. He did have a blunt stump at the proximal cap. So how to approach this lesion? We know that we have a blunt cap, we have good quality distal vessel, the collateral seem to be epicardial. So we decided to go with dual access and uh, we use the radial and femoral with uh, plans for undergrade crossing with potentially using IVUS to guide our puncture and retrograde OEDR only if the undergrade crossing failed. This is the diagnostic angiogram, the dual injection. The remaining vessels look fairly good. So it's very interesting that the patient had isolated disease into the LAD. And we have the CTO of the proximal LAD. This is right at the takeoff of this diagonal branch. The distal vessel is filling through epicardial collaterals mainly from the right coronary artery. And this is the occluded segment. This is the leocranial view, very similar. We can see that actually we see where the stump is, but it is fairly blunt. And when it comes to the collaterals, we do have uh, some septal collateral, but this is going very close to the distal cap, so not very useful for crossing the CTO. And this epicardial coming from an acute marginal branch is extremely tortuous and probably not the optimal vessel for doing retrograde. We place the guide wire to protect the diagonal branch, and then initially we use the dual lumen microcatheter, a recross, and with a Gaia next to, but we had difficulty advancing the guide wire into the proximal cap. Eventually, we switched uh, for a single lumen microcatheter. We used again the Gaia next one wire, and it seems to be going in the right direction, but it is a little off axis. So we took out the Gaia next two and de-escalated to a Mongo wire. And that is why we don't say undergrade wiring escalation anymore, but would say undergrade wiring, because it's not just an escalation, but it is escalation and de-escalation. So in this particular case, we escalated with a Gaia next two, and then we de-escalated using a Gladius Mongo wire. Now, we do the contralateral injection and we see that we are in the extra plaque position. And the question is, do we do stingray for the entry or do we try to do parallel wiring? And we decided to do the latter. So we used back the recross microcatheter. We used a Gaia next two, trying to redirect the second wire. And then um, we were able to advance that wire into the true lumen. 
a trick for confirming where to lumen is to inject the contralateral and then when we visualize the vessel, advance the wire to see if it's moving easily within the vessel lumen. So successful crossing of the LED CTO. We predilated, uh, stented, and then uh, we have this problem. So not really much undergrade flow, which is fairly concerning as we were fairly confident that we were in the distal true lumen. So what is going on? Looks like the distal vessel may have had a dissection, so we placed an additional short stand. And then we did have a good flow, but we did use OCT to try to optimize the PCI result. And uh, what we're seeing is that the stand looks very, very good. However, proximally in the vessel, there is uh, some uh, stenosis that appears to be significant. And this is how it looks, uh, again, uh, proximal to the stand, proximal to the diagonal. There is some stenosis on the LED. Looking at OCT, this is a lipidic plaque. And uh, the minimum lumen area is 3.8 millimeters square, which is quite small for a young man, especially at age 45. This actually uh, was performed literally the day before the trial prevent was presented at ACC that showed that uh, stenting high-risk plaques as assessed by intravascular imaging with high plaque burden and evidence for lipid core plaque and thick, uh, thin cap fibroatheroma may potentially be helpful. However, in this case, we decided to stand, so we sized our stand based on OCT, and uh, we did get uh, a very nice result. Timothy Flow, excellent result, uh, both in geographically as well as by OCT. So multiple lessons from this case. The first one is that CT, coronary CT and geography is truly making inroads in the diagnosis of coronary disease. And we're increasingly seeing patients who are referred directly to us after having a coronary CT and found to have a CTO, even before having coronary angiography. And this is obviously very advantageous because you avoid one procedure, less uh, access for the patient, less risk for the patient. So this is a great way to plan PCI, both CTO as well as non-CTO PCI. Specifically for CTO PCI, CT and geography can help us understand all the four components of the lesion, the proximal cap, the lesion length, the composition of the plaque and the occlusion, the distal vessel. The only anatomic feature that is not assessed robustly is the collateral circulation because of the lower resolution of coronary CT compared with coronary angiography. In this case, we had a blunt cap next to a proximal cap. We did use a dual and a single lumen microcatheter, both to penetrate uh, through the proximal cap, but also then we did parallel wiring after our wire went into the extra plug position. Then we did the use intracoronary imaging, and we ended up stenting a potentially and geographically non-occlusive plug, the proximal LAD. It did have a small area by optical coherence tomography and also had lipidic component, so it appeared to be a complex plaque. This remains an area of debate. However, we believe that in this YAC patient with this uh, relatively high-risk lesion in the proximal LAD, standing in was probably the best uh, treatment option. Thank you.